How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy, and as you can see, we're back at it talking about the Amazons, and welcome to our second video breaking down the New York Metropolitan's 2024 player preview and projections. This time, we're going to be taking a look at the Mets outfield with Brandon Nimmo and Harrison Bader in particular, two guys that can handle center field without a problem. Now the Mets have a good problem on their hands, knowing that they don't need to have Brandon Nimmo necessarily starting every single day in center, which will conserve his legs for the season. So so let's get into everything that you guys need to know about both Bader and Nemo, how they're previewing heading into the season, ultimately how they may project, not only from what we see through fan graphs, but also my humble opinion. So play to get into on these players. But before I do that, make sure to smash that like and subscribe on as it is the easiest and best way to support the channel. Thank you all so much in advance and make sure you're chiming in and staying tuned because we're going to be coming out with these videos on an every other day basis, pretty much until the regular season or close to breaking down all these key Metropolitans for the 2024 regular season and let's kick things off by breaking down the newcomer the man that's coming over from the Bronx no not Carlos Mendoza no not Luis Severino we're talking about yes Harrison Bader and Harrison Bader is a player that again when he first came in the league was absolutely electric with the St. Louis Cardinals when he had the lawn hair as you see him in the highlights there I mean he has been known as one of the best true outfielders in the game today as long as he can stay on the field that's a big thing with Harrison Bader and that's why the Mets ain't him on again a one-year short-term deal as pretty much a placeholder and the Mets will either decide to keep him by the trade deadline at their position to sell then they might trade him at the deadline either way Bader is looking to have success this time with the team not named the Yanks here in New York and if you look at his stat line down below this past season and 344 plate appearances playing time with both the Yanks and then the Cincinnati Reds a 232 clip we're looking at a 622 OPS well below league average and WRC plus that's around 100 he was at 70 seven home runs 40 RBIs and of course he can steal some bags for you so what is there to be excited about and look forward to in someone like Harrison Bader who we know is a little bit of a big swing and miss guy for sure definitely can chase here and there and is not a guy that gets on base on a tremendous clip that makes up for say the low batting average so what gives what is the appeal with Harrison Bader right and we all know it is that defense it is one of the best defenders in Major League Baseball Harrison Bader truthfully is one of the best defenders in all the game when evaluating each and every position but center field in particular there are very few that do better than Harrison Bader and that's why even Brandon Nimmo who's a gold glove caliber center fielder who has changed so much in the right way defensively over the past number of years he is going to be playing the bulk of the season until proven otherwise in left field while Bader commands center they of course are going to be platooning and switching off and the big thing for Bader and how he projects for this upcoming year is really how much playing time does he get too, right? The Mets have Tyrone Taylor that we will discuss, I'm sure, in another video talking more about the Mets outfield projecting for the upcoming season. And Taylor's a guy that's going to get a solid amount of looks too. The Mets have top prospect Drew Gilbert, who's knocking on the door trying to crack this outfield within the first couple of months of the season too. So the Mets have a lot of outfield depth and a lot of interesting options. And Bader, it's going to be imperative for him to make sure that he can at least stay solid at the plate and have his superb defense to warrant him playing on a consistent basis again this is an outfield that might be ever changing throughout the year based on certain matchups lefties versus righties for example especially that's where someone like Tyron Taylor can come into play but ultimately Drew Gilbert once he's up what does that mean for one of those guys in Bader and of course that being in Taylor it's a great question mark so with the uncertainty as to exactly how much playing time Bader is going to get this year you look at the stat line down below again Fangrass hasn't projected play right around 100 games the past two seasons he's played between 80 and just under 100 games so I feel like that's pretty on par you know just around a 250 average a 700 OPS almost league average here at 95 WRC plus 12 home runs 50 RBIs I'm actually buying this a lot on the Fangraphs projections in particular I don't love all of them but in this one I do because it really does feel like that is the type of Harrison Bader stat line we would see happening should again he have that kind of sample size and if he doesn't is that because of a lack of production on his end or is it because say guys are simply outperforming or because he dealt with injury if I had to assume I would assume that the injury bug would be the biggest thing hurting Harrison Bader having as much success as he would like in Queens but this is a New York native someone who always envisioned himself with the Mets he even said this as being a former Yankee always thought he would be a Met even during his time 
with the Yanks. He has a boatload of Mets fan family, which is awesome. And of course, he's a former teammate of Pete Alonso during their time at Florida being those Gators. So Harrison Bader, yes, you're not going to get a tremendous amount of contact. And yes, he isn't going to give you too high of an OBP, but you're looking for plus defense. And with a pitching staff that the Mets currently have constructed, they need as much plus defense as possible. I think Mets fans are going to realize quickly how much a great defense will help out a team that's in desperate need for help given their lack of pitching and Harrison Bader is going to be in the thick of it all making some tremendous grabs like you just saw there in the highlights stealing bags on the bases as well and getting creative with his ways to implement this lineup which will likely be towards the bottom in the eight or nine hole if I had to assume so Harrison Bader lots of question marks with him and his usage for the 2024 Mets season but as things currently stand they're committing to him as their center fielder more often than not until proven otherwise so let's see what the New York native has in store not in the Bronx but this time with the New York Metropolitans here in Queens but before we get on to Brandon Nimmo I do have to let you all know about our amazing sponsor here on the channel that being our great friends at BetUS for those that don't know BetUS is America's number one sports book as they're safe secure and reliable and they've got you covered with all your sports betting needs whether it's NHL in season action which a lot of you guys have been doing lately if it's NBA in season action as long as you're making sure that you're making the proper bets and not hammering money line like I just did on my Knicks against the Hawks that was shame on me but again the bias kicks in how about MLB futures because as we take a look at bet us who is going to lead the league and saves this year they have Edwin Diaz at plus 750 odds with Josh Hader and Emmanuel Classe out of all people above them all Paul Seawall right behind him, the former Metropolitan, now with the Arizona Diamondbacks at plus 1,200. I'm sorry, but even Edwin Diaz coming back from injury, this is such an easy lock to hammer. Given these odds, you would be foolish not to. So as long as you guys are into sports betting, you want to get in on the action like this, again, do it with me. Let's place the bet right now. Let's put, again, I love these odds so much. Let's put 50 down on Edwin here and hope that this hits big. That's 375 if that does hit by the season's end. Edwin Diaz is going to have a monster year for the New York Metropolitans. I'm very confident in saying that. Let's confirm that. Let's place it. Hope you guys get in on the actual we'll all your sports betting needs too. We're going to be doing some awesome, unique Wardy NYM parlays, covering Mets games throughout the regular season and breaking them down in our post game shows. So if you want to get in on the action too, and of course be responsible, check out BetUS today by clicking the link down below. That way you two get 125% boost. Now with your first, now with your second, but your first three deposits, it is that easy, quick money to work with, and a lot of fun in doing so. Again, shout out BetUS as always for being a great sponsor on the channel. But now let's hop back into this because we just spoke about Harrison Bader again the New York native the one that's rekindling his relationship with Pete Alonzo now let's talk about the man that has been here and the man that has deemed by many as the captain of the organization I firmly do agree to a certain extent again maybe not the lone captain but he's in that mix and that is Brandon Nimmo Brandon of course just recently signed that massive contract with the New York Metropolitans over the past year and a half or so and he has lived up to it thus far he has been absolutely killing it for the Mets as a guy that gets on base at a tremendous clip easily in that 330 and then at his absolute best 350 360 plus range I mean this past season alone I should say I'm actually underestimating him I don't know why I was thinking 330 it must be the Harrison Bader talk because Harrison Bader's peak OBP is around 330 so it makes sense we saw Nimmo this past year 363 OBP of course you see the stat line down below there too I mean throughout his career he averages 380 on the obp again we've seen multiple years with him in the 400 plus and and getting on base he's tremendous hits for high contact yes past two seasons identical 274 average but what stood out so much this past year for brandon nimmo was showcasing the power 24 home runs 68 rbis but 89 runs scored that's the big one his ability to get on base and be able to not necessarily be a driver of getting those runs in but being on the bases and being those runs scored brandon nimmo has not only been tremendous in the outfield which i'm excited to see him more in the corner because i think that's going to help his longevity in his mets tenure and in this contract so I'm not opposed to that whatsoever at least to start out the season and see how things work but brandon nimmo again is a force to be reckoned with as a true leadoff hitter in this lineup and showcasing that power the way that he is while I've been teetering back and forth on how I feel about Nimmo in the lineup 
I do love the idea of having, having power still in that leadoff spot. So one, I don't hate the idea of him in that spot. It may change throughout the year, but ultimately, as you look at his projections for this upcoming season, you know, they are a little underwhelming, not as strong as you would think. They're expecting Brandon Nemo to take a little bit of a step back in 2024. We're looking at a 267 average and not even 800 OPS, a 124 WRC plus 18 home runs, 65 RBIs. I'm not buying that whatsoever. I'm buying the fact that I think Brandon Nemo is going to match his home run total from last year if not surpass it and get north of 30 that i discussed in a hot takes video with draft neck mark recently that is how confident i am about brandon nemo's power i think we're going to see that continue i think he's going to go gap to gap plenty love seeing him go opposite field as a lefty bat we love that all so much and don't even get me started on the tremendous personality of brandon nemo the most selfless man from wyoming imaginable most selfless man in the league it feels like and he has been such a tremendous leader he took over for max scherzer too this spring at doing a full-blown golf course event you know mini golf basically but it's like juice to the gills it's not your normal mini golf and he invited and took care of every metropolitan and their family that was something that scherzer had done the past couple seasons and now the keys the torch rather has been passed to nimmo again just further examples of brandon just being the ultimate leader of this organization and just being such a phenomenal human being and doing so as he does his little point to the sky as he sprints down first from the walk was there not to love about Brandon Nemo so projection wise I am selling what Fangraphs has and I'm buying Brandon Nemo giving me a 275 to 280 average giving me a 375 to 380 OBP I'm looking at an OPS of at least 820 this season, again, not drastically different than what Fangrass has projected, but I do not see a line with what they have. I think RBI-wise, too, we might get a little bit higher. Maybe we're going to get in that 70 range there, while maybe the run score may go down a little bit and stay 89. Maybe they go down to the low 80s. Either way, Brandon Nimmo, I love the idea of him having a monster power year for the Metropolitans like we saw this past year and then hopefully continuing to do so because there's one thing we know about today's game, power will get you far. Farther than maybe we initially thought. As much as slap hitting and getting on base is fun, it is not a recipe for continued success. Power will lead the way. So Brandon Nemo, I'm all for the slug and keep it up. Because you know what the difference is? You versus McNeil, you actually have the power and you're able to back it up with all your other play. McNeil, when he has the power, doesn't have the power on the consistent basis the way that Brandon Nimmo does. That's what kind of separates them two, right? Nimmo can give you 25 bombs while still giving you over 800 OPS and giving you, you know, a roughly 400 OBP. I mean, it's just tremendous what he's able to do. And I'm really excited about him and this 2024 Metropolitan season. So Mets fans, wherever you're a fan of, let me know your thoughts down below. What is your biggest takeaway from this player preview and projection for Harrison Bader and Brandon Nimmo? Do you agree, disagree with them? How do you foresee them having the types of season here in 2024? Do you think they're going to be good, bad, and different? Whatever you're feeling, let me know down below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for consistent coverage on all things Mets, all in season long, post game shows, various types of live shows. We're going to be having a lot of individual video content coming out very soon your boys going to spring training in the coming days we have a big announcement coming so be on the lookout and i'll talk to you again real soon let's go mets baby peace out